Welcome back, everyone. This is your Blue Devil News. I'm Aaron. And I'm Jesse. Don't forget that Friday, March 5th is asynchronous day, and you will not come to LHS. Everyone will have an achieve article to complete, along with Alex's assignments from math. Last weekend, a few students had the pleasure of participating in Youth in Government. This year, we had three officers, Wade Matthews, Emma Peruki, and Tabitha Anderson. In 2022, John Murdoch, Emma Peruki, and Daryl Mitchell will be serving as officers. Congratulations to Miranda Phillips, Rachel Walpole, Brianna Woodcock, and Reese Miller for winning Outstanding Delegate within their components. We also had two participants nominated as Kona alternates, Abigail Hopper and Tabitha Anderson. The senior night dates have just been announced and it will be April 16th, so everyone do what you're supposed to do so it doesn't get canceled because of the virus. Prom is May 7th here on the soccer field. It'll be a night to remember. Tickets are $40 if purchased before March 26th and $50 after that. Tickets will not be sold after April 23rd. You may purchase them at the bank or online. Your books are still on sale for $90. Pre-orders have ended, so we are currently selling remaining stock and do not anticipate on having extras. We sold out last year and expect to do so this year. Orders can be placed using school cash or on yearbookforever.com. Senior makeup pictures have been rescheduled for March 15th, and senior superlative pictures will be Friday, March 5th. GSA will meet today at 3 o'clock in Ms. Robinson's room at B213. If you're hungry or need a drink, FBLA is selling chips and drinks this week in between classes. Everything is $1. If you are needing help with math, Mr. Bergeron is available tomorrow and Thursday after school in A104. Cumberland Dual Enrollment Interest Meeting will be on March 18th at 6 p.m. The swim team had, had another strong showing last Friday night, even with the dependent squad. The team was managed a second place finish against Green Hill, Mount Juliet, Gallatin, Hansonville, and ACA. Juniors, don't forget that you have access to a program called Analyze Ed that you have been introduced to in your ACT prep class and can access this program with your Chromebooks. We are challenging you to spend 20 minutes with Analyze Ed for the days leading up to March 16th. Now here's another ACT tips clip. Let's talk about guessing on the ACT. So the first thing I'm gonna say is a caveat. One of the things that I often talk to my students about when I first start tutoring kids is I tell them how guessing is a really bad strategy generally on the ACT. I don't want you to go into the test with a guessing mindset, but that doesn't mean that you should never guess. And that doesn't mean that there's no place for guessing. So what we're gonna talk about in this video is one, when do you guess? When is it actually appropriate to guess? And two, how do you guess better so that you're not just shrugging your shoulders and going, I don't know, and then closing your eyes and pin the tail on the donkey finding an answer choice, okay? You shouldn't just any time you feel a little bit intimidated guess. That's a really bad strategy because if you do that all the time and you get easily intimidated, you can completely bomb this test even if you're a super smart, awesome person. Now here's what I will say. Yes, it is better to pick something than to pick nothing because the ACT does not penalize you for putting a wrong answer. There's no penalty for wrong answers, so you should always put an answer no matter what. But that aside, I want you guys to make the most informed guesses you can and not just be, you know, throwing a dart into the air and hoping for the best and saying your prayers, okay? That is not the best guessing strategy, okay? Let's first talk about the three times when it's appropriate to guess. The first time that you should guess on the ACT is when you need to move on. The ACT is really hard on pacing, and I really recommend that you guys at least take one practice exam before you take the real thing if you have the time. Some of you are like, Brooke, the test is in an hour. There's no way I can do that. And if that's you, thumbs up. But really, if that's you, I get it, fine, cool. Totally understand. But in any case, at least look through the pacing on each section and know about how much time you have per passage, per question, that kind of stuff, and do a little breakdown for yourself before you step in and walk in and take the test. Even if you've got an hour, even if you've got two hours before the test, it's something you could take 20 minutes to do and it could help you so that you know when to guess and know when to fight. Now granted, when it is time to move on, typically you've read the question, you've done a little bit of work on it and you're just not sure what the answer is yet. My hope is that you've at least eliminated a couple of answer choices, you're not just sitting there freaking out, and that you've narrowed it and you can just choose between the two that you've narrowed to the best of your ability. And that's okay and that's a good time to guess because you gotta move on. Now let's talk about what you do when you actually guess. Again, the worst thing you can do is freak out, let your brain go to mush, and then just like pick something at random. That's not good guessing. Good guessing means you're actually making informed guesses. That means one, you're gonna always use process of elimination, right? That means you're looking at what answer choices seem ridiculous and obviously wrong or extreme or whatever it is, and you're getting rid of them. And that kind of goes for every section, okay? Two, in math, you can often pick what makes sense. Even though it says it's not to scale in math for geometry problems, a lot of times it is. So you can kind of look at it and sort of like eyeball it, and that might at least get you to a 50-50. Same with word problems, right? If you know it took him this long to run the whole distance and we need to know how long it's gonna take him to run half that distance, well, 
you can kind of ballpark it, right? You might not get it exactly right, but you can kind of eyeball it, ballpark it, and at least try to give yourself a little bit of brain power behind your guess. Don't just shrug your shoulders and give up. That is not as effective because if you can get it down to 50-50 and you get a lot of stuff down to 50-50, you're going to get more points in the end. And the final thing that I'll say is with reading and guessing, the other thing that I like to do sometimes is I like to think about the main idea of the passage, right? If you can kind of remember what's your main summary of everything, what's the main idea of the passage overall, if you can remember those kind of things, those can inform little answers. So you can kind of think what aligns with what the passage is saying overall. Which of these sounds the most reasonable given what I know the main ideas are or the main messaging is? Which of these fits into that story the best? And sometimes that kind of instinct can get you 70 to 80 percent of the chance of getting something right, even if you can't find that detail. I know on reading sometimes it's like you can't find where the exact place is. And sometimes if I just zoom out and I think about that big picture, that's a way I can kind of guess but it's educated, it's informed. I'm not just like, I don't know, I can't find it, B, right? That is going to not help you guys. And if you can think about it a little bit differently, and even I do that sometimes on the reading, on a really tough reading passage, I may have one or two questions where I've guessed based on the main idea, and about 80 or 90% of the time I get it right. And that's how you can kind of score perfect scores and things like this, because when you have a little flub, we can't always find that one detail. But if we know the messaging of the passage, the kind of things that it says. The other thing that I'm going to say, one more thing on guessing on the reading, is with process of elimination, almost every word is mentioned somewhere in the passage. So I'm just going to give you a quick tip on how not to guess, especially on the reading. Don't guess because you recognize something from the passage. This also goes for science. Just because you recognize something from an answer choice and you remember reading it in the passage does not mean it's right. Most of the time, every wrong answer on the ACT is somewhere in the passage in the reading section. Tomorrow, culinary students will compete in our annual pasta competition here at LHS against Wilson Central and Green Hill High School. This event is open for teachers, students, and parents to come and cheer on your favorite chefs. Cooking starts at 5.30. Tennessee Boys and Girls State is among the most respected and selective educational programs of government instruction. This year, it will be virtual with two different dates. The day for girls will be June 1st through June 4th, and for boys, it will be May 25th through the 29th. Please come by guidance and pick up a form from Ms. Reed. You must have a parking pass to park on campus. If you do not have one, there are, an app there are applications outside the bank, and you may purchase a pass during lunch. If you have lost your pass, replacement passes are $5 and also available at the bank during lunch. Please make sure your tag is properly displayed and visible, and be sure you are in the correct spot that coordinates with your tag. The softball team is having a grab-and-go pancake breakfast on March 13th from 8 to 10 at Emanuel Baptist Church. Tickets are $5. You can buy your tickets now from any softball player or email Coach Atwood. The Lady Devil S keep winning and play the next round of regionals tomorrow at 7 p.m. The, the girls' basketball team and athletic department are buying 150 tickets for students who sit in the student section on Wednesday night. You can sign up at the bank during lunch to get the free ticket on Wednesday. First car, first car, serve, so come out and support the girls. That's all the news we have today, LHS. I'm Aaron. And I'm Jesse. And this has been news to you from, from the, the white and blue. blue.